Hello, and welcome back to What's Bubbling at Zim. I'm Dr. Abstract. <laughs> Nearly forgot. <laughs> All right, we're uh, taking a look at what's new in Zim version Zim02. Let's go to the Zim site now at zimjs.com. And up here in the banner, we're looking through these, and we've gotten to this rather abstract one here, and that is for the Zim loop. Now, we've had Zim loop for a while, but now we've got Zim loop with an interval parameter after the reverse parameter. So let's refresh this again. What that's doing is it's making those colors change, and then we just animated uh, that uh, maneuver right there inside of a loop. Uh, those also accept Zim V values for the, the interval itself. Let's go in and take a look at the code for this. 12, F11, there we go. Drop that down, move it on over, and here we are. So this is the loop example. We've got a bunch of information there, so have a read. Here we are looping through an array of colors. Each time we're getting the color and the index. <laughs> uh, we're zogging that index. And then what? Um, if i is 2, then we return next. That's how we can skip immediately to the next interval. If you just hit return, then it would not go any further, but it would still wait for the next interval to go. So a bit, bit of a difference there. You know what? I wonder if we could skip forward. Like this is uh, this is going to the next. I wonder if it'd be good to go back again. Uh, interesting. Why don't we add that just quickly before I forget? So here is Slack, and there's requests. Um, consider prev. I think we have a keyword now for prev for loop with inter. Vol. All right, we'll keep it short like that for um, because we're in the middle of recording here. <laughs> but sometimes you don't you don't want to lose those things. Anyway, next we'll skip to the next one. So that's uh, that's new for loop. Uh, but if we want to get down to it, right here's where it's all happening. After the loop backwards, so true means loop backwards, we are now passing in a series of 0.2 and 1. So what that means is each time it loops, the first time it will wait 0.2 seconds, the next time it will wait 1, then 0.2, then 1, then 0.2. That's why this looks a little bit odd when we refresh here. Fast, slow, wait, fast, slow, fast, slow. Okay, so watch that again. Fast, slow, fast, slow, fast, slow. And it looks like we're missing orange, maybe. No, what are we missing? Yeah. So we have a bunch of colors, but we don't have orange because orange was uh, skipped. However, the series timeout worked just fine. It worked as, as expected, even though that was skipped. So that's what that was demonstrating. And then once it's done, if i is 0, so we've just looped backwards. We're at the last one. We could. I can't remember. I don't think we did put an event now that we have it. Uh, we didn't put an event on the loop um, for when it's done. Instead, we just said, eh, if it's done, just say it's done. Either it's at, at the, the maximum number. or it's at, So anyway, at the moment, we still don't have a callback for when this loop is done. I don't think. Let me just check to see if we put that in there or not. Um, so we'll go to here and then to the docs and then type in loop and have a look if there's any events listed down here. Examples, examples, parameters, returns, no, no events here. It's another thing, the, the loop itself isn't even a display object. Uh, you don't have to be a display object to dispatch events. You know, there could be a call, a call back, the function to call. We've already got a call in there. That's the function to call when we're looping and to add a call back. All the other callbacks are also a call. And so now we would have a call and a callback, and that callback wouldn't be the same as the other callbacks, which are all calls. So it's sort of like... <laughs> ah, yes. What do you think? <laughs> Hopefully you don't mind us being a little silly. The last, um, the last bubblings were a little bit stiff and serious, weren't they? <laughs> Getting down to business. Tell you the truth, then. Ah, oh, a little... Little tired. Yes, it's been like two months of this. Um, so here are the uh, <laughs> here are the bubbling videos just before my nap. 
Uh, okay, so that was one loop. The other loop, once we once we have hit the zero index, uh, hopefully you know what the Zim loop is. The Zim loop is a replacement, in a sense, for the for loop and a, bun a bunch of other types of loops as well that can easily loop through containers, uh, arrays, object literals, by numbers, HTML, uh, HTML lists. Um, so loop is quite versatile, uh, but it is immediately. So the whole loop happens and then you get control back. So you can't animate in a loop. It usually just finishes and then you get control back. It's like a for loop. Whereas here, we're now adding an interval uh, parameter that will allow you to do things between loops. However, that's very much like a, an interval then. So here is an interval. This is an interval that's going every one second to do this function every one second. So why wouldn't we just use an interval? Well, this interval wasn't set up to be able to loop through a container. So say you wanted to process uh, the items in a container every one second. You would have to use the object right here. The object can give you a count. And based on that count, you can access the child, uh, get child at. So the containers get child at at that count, but that's just a little bit more difficult to do. So now, uh, here is a container up here. I'm gonna show you another example of the tile is a container. So we've made a tile of all of this stuff here, a bunch of rectangles of various colors. And then, um, let's see, we put a backing rectangle on that. So that's just making this rectangle in behind here. Let's have a look at it. So there's the backing rectangle white with all those tiles right there. And now what we're doing is we're looping through each tile and changing the color of it. So here's, this is the function right here that's being called from below. But if I wanted to, I could do it right away. So if I make that tile like that, just get rid of that. Uh, get rid of that one too. Because that's going to call a function eventually that isn't there anymore now that I've commented out. Oh, I could have left the function there, I suppose. So what we've got is the tile, and now we're loop, tile loop each time we get the item. <coughs> Excuse me. We're setting the item's color to darker, updating the stage. We're not rewinding, and we're doing this every, well, let's slow it down a little bit. Let's call it every point one. You ready? This is the live version right here. So I want to go back and see. That was the live version. Okay, let's open up in a default browser here. There we go. There it goes. So now it's happening right away. I'll refresh again. Happening right away. It's looping through the tile uh, every 0.1 seconds and changing the color to dark. Bing. Cool, huh? So that's a little bit easier than doing it this way. I would have done roughly the same thing, I guess. Yes. Okay, so these two things are doing the same thing, except, point one second. Okay. So we've just saved some, some code there and conceptually made it a little bit easier. Oops, maybe maybe we didn't change, save too much code. Let's have a look. That's all right. Tab. Oh, it's about. The, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> Looking at the same thing. <laughs> Supposed to be comparing it to this thing down here. <laughs> it's exactly the same. <laughs> that was hilarious. Uh, so that, oh, I was demonstrating here that we also have a next in the loop if we want. Oh, this isn't even doing the same thing anymore, but it would be roughly the same as that, ex uh, yeah, except I'd have to go in here. That would be a loop of 0.1, like so. Uh, interval loop, we're getting an object, object.count. This would then be tile.get, well, we could use items, items at obj.count. It's a little bit shorter than get child at i. And what are we wanting to do to it? Setting its dot color equal to darker. And updating the stage. Stage dot update. Five. Nope. Um, none of that. 
that stuff. Okay, so there's the point one, point one. We have to pass it in null because we're not reversing. And yeah, so you know, similar amount of code, but it's a little bit more complex to kind of remember to know how to do this, know how to use the interval object to get a count. It's much easier. Loop through the item, change the item's color, do it every point one. Woohoo! All right, so I don't know, something you can play with. And that has been a What's Bubbling with Zim. I am Dr. Abstract. So you're welcome to come in to zimjs.com slash slack or zimjs.com slash discord. Join us there. Talk to us about this new loop, uh, loop, uh, loop uh, interval. <laughs> I've considered it for a while. You know, should, should we do that? Could we do that? Hmm. And indeed, now we've done it. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs>